Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning. What a joy it is to worship together uh, on this first Sunday of Advent. We are so glad that you have tuned in today and, um, and hope and pray that um, this is a wonderful time for us to, to, to be together virtually as we enter into God's presence now. I invite you to join me as we, as we pray together. Loving God, we thank you for this day, and it's my deepest desire for more of you and for less of me. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. How many of you like to wait? Let's face it, nobody likes to wait. I, I don't know a single person that likes to wait, whether it's waiting in line in a store or waiting for your food to arrive at a restaurant or uh, waiting for a special occasion to arrive, and certainly this time of the year for kids, waiting for Christmas Day to get here. Uh, nobody likes to wait. It's not fun, and it's not something that we look forward to, especially in today's day and age when we all want what we want when we want it, and usually we want it now. We don't like to wait for it. Well, it's, it's Advent. And I don't know about you, but it feels like it has taken Advent forever to get here. I've waited a very long time for this day to arrive, and it's been perhaps the most unusual year uh, that any of us can ever remember in, in our lives, and it seems like it's taken three years to get from March to here at the end of November. This year's been hard, uh, from the pandemic that we're still enduring to, to racial injustices, to political unrest, and the list goes on and on. This has been a challenging year for us. And for some, it's been a year of chaos. Many lives have been turned upside down, and I don't know how many times I've heard someone say, I can't wait for 2020 to be over and for 2021 to get here. And as I think about this, and I think about the fact that Advent is finally here, I, I wonder if this is a bit how the people of Jesus' time felt as well. As they awaited the promise of hope and the promise of peace, did they feel as if Jesus would never show up? 
Well, just like the people of the first century and people before then, we are longing for hope now, for some good news. And if there was ever a time we needed the Lord, it's now. So I invite you to hear our scripture passage for this morning. It comes to us from the the book of Psalms, and it's Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 19. I invite you to hear these words of the psalmist. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we might be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You had fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand and the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In his commentary on the book of Psalms, Robert Mays states the following about this particular passage from Psalm 80. Mays says, Whatever the original historical setting, the psalm in its continued use belongs to the repertoire of the afflicted people of God on their way through the troubles of history. It kind of sounds like us today, the the people of God working our way through the troubles of history. This psalm is actually a prayer. It's a prayer seeking restoration in Israel. Uh, The opening of this psalm leads us to believe that, that God is inattentive or even absent. Have you ever felt this way before that that God wasn't paying attention to you, or maybe even that God felt absent in your life. But the interesting thing about this passage is that the psalmist, even though addresses God and kind of hints to this possibility of God not being uh, available or even God being absent, still the psalmist addresses the sovereignty of God that speaks to God's power in God's presence. In verse 3, 7, and 19, the psalmist requests that God restore the people. If you think of this psalm as a song, those three verses would serve as the refrain that would come back over and over again in this particular psalm. And the words restore us could mean um, several things in this particular context. Its Hebrew translation literally means to cause us to return. There are several appropriate meanings of this phrase, restore us, that can be applied in this passage. Uh, One is, it can mean to, to bring the people back from exile. The people of Israel knew what it was like to suffer and to be exiled. So, restore us can mean bringing back from exile. It can also mean repentance, um, a turning from our our wicked ways and returning to God. And it can also mean a return to life, a return to life as we know it and to the fullness of life. I mean, how many times have we said in these past months, I wish we could go back to the way things were before the pandemic. We're living in a day and age that We want to be restored. We want to be saved. And the refrain in this psalm, restore us, let your face shine that we may be saved, it it points to the blessing of Aaron that's found in the Old Testament book of Numbers, of, of God's face 
shining upon us. It's a sign of approval and a sign of blessing. And let's be honest, we all want God's approval, and we certainly want God's blessings in our lives. In this psalm, it's a prayer that's an act of faith. God's people trusted Him to transform their circumstances, and and they wanted God to restore them. Their prayer of faith, in essence, became an act of hope. And as Christian people, we should expect to see the reign of God, the sovereignty of God, where others see chaos and perhaps even despair. Well, the word Advent is derived from the Latin word of Adventus. It, it means coming or to come, which is a translation of the Greek word parousia. Scholars believe that during the 4th and the 5th centuries in Spain and in Gaul, that Advent was a season of preparation for new Christians and their baptism. But it It didn't happen in the month of December. It actually came after December in the month of January during the Feast of Epiphany. And during the season of preparations, um, Christians would spend 40 days in penance, prayer, and fasting to prepare them for this wonderful celebration. So originally, there was little connection between Advent and Christmas. But by the 6th century, the Roman Christians had tied Advent to the coming of Christ. But the coming that they were referring to was not necessarily the coming of Christ in a manger 2,000 years ago. The coming they spoke of was the second coming of Christ returning to the world. And it wasn't until the Middle Ages that the Advent season was explicitly linked to Christ's first coming at Christmas. You see, the season of Advent, it's about preparation, preparing to receive the gift of grace and forgiveness and salvation, much much like the early Christians spent their time in preparation. It's preparing to live our lives as disciples and preparing to go to the ends of the world to preach the gospel and preparing to receive the newborn King. There's so much that we do to prepare for Christmas Day. Many of us, perhaps most of us, already have our Christmas tree up. We already have our Christmas decorations out. It's all a part of Christmas, uh, the decorating and the the preparation for the big day. There's, There's anticipation and there's excitement for Christmas Day. And on the one hand, there's actually joy and excitement in the waiting because there is the assurance that Christmas Day will arrive and will be here soon. What would it be like if we spent every opportunity that we have waiting filled with this kind of anticipation to see how God is going to work and and where God is going to show up? What if we spent our moments waiting preparing for what God wants to do in us and through us. How might our waiting change? And how might we experience a spirit of preparation as we wait? Rather than jumping ahead into a decision or or some moment in our lives, what if we spent time preparing to hear from God and actively seek God's direction and guidance? Some of our greatest times of growth are experienced in the midst of waiting. Think about the times in your life when you had to wait, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, whether it was you were waiting on something or, or someone. While the waiting may not be fun or maybe even painful or difficult, we can often experience great spiritual growth in the times of waiting. And and better yet, we can often experience the presence of God in the midst of waiting. Human nature tells us that we need to rush from one thing to the next. If I'm not busy, then I'm not productive. 
And if I'm not productive, then I'm not successful. And let's be honest, we judge one another based on how we see each other as successful. So as we enter into the season of Advent, we remember that it's, it's a time of intentional waiting, active waiting and preparation. It's a waiting that leads to something great. But for us as 21st century Christians, we don't have to wait for Christ's first coming. He's already among us. Emmanuel, God with us. We have access to God right now. No waiting required. You see, Christ entered into the messiness of the world 2,000 years ago. And He wants to enter into the messiness of our lives today. But the question is, will we let Him? Will we let Christ move in our chaotic, busy, messy lives to bring His message of hope and peace? Not just for our sake, but for the sake of the world, that we might be His hands and His feet and His very body for the transformation of the world. Our Advent candle today is the candle of hope. It's a hope that can meet us anywhere, no matter what the messiness of this world may bring. It's the hope of Emmanuel that carries us through and gives us purpose. It's a hope that can restore us, just like the psalmist prayed. It's a hope that shines on us, in us, and through us, that we may receive the blessings that God has in store for us. At the first Christmas, Christ entered into the brokenness of humanity to offer this hope in this peace. People were at odds with one another, and, and humanity was looking for a better and a brighter day. And Christ was welcomed into the world. Although He did not receive the welcome that you and I probably think He should have received, He still came. You see, God promised a Messiah, and the people waited. And then God delivered, and Jesus came into the world. And the world was changed forever. Even though the world was full of hatred and despair, pain, turmoil, and uncertainty, Christ still came, and Christ still comes today. No matter what we are facing, Christ wants to enter into our world and bring hope, peace, joy, and love. And so the question is, will we let Christ into our lives and welcome Him into our world. Tears are falling, hearts are breaking, how we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting, welcome holy child, welcome holy child, hope that you don't mind our manger, how I wish we would have known. Long-awaited, holy stranger, 
make yourself at home. Please make yourself at home. Bring your peace into our violence. Bid our hungry souls be filled. A word now breaking heaven's silence. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our Fragile fingers sent to heal us, tender brow prepared for Thor. Tiny heart whose blood can save us, unto us is born, unto us is born. around you breathe our air and walk our side rob our sin and make us holy perfect son of God perfect son of God Loving God, we thank you that you entered into the messiness of this world to bring hope and to bring peace. And God, may we prepare ourselves to receive you and allow you to work in and through us that you might bring transformation to the entire world. We thank you for Jesus, Emmanuel. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online, my hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us. <music>